Hey guys, it's Frank here. You may have seen the title of this video and think, oh my god, what happened? What is going on with him? So I'm going to explain exactly what happened and why I am not part of my master program anymore. But before I get more into that, let me talk about my school experience thus far. So after I graduated high school, I ended up taking a couple months off before I went to my first school. Unfortunately, I only had applied to one four-year college and it was a little bit too late, so I ended up getting denied, leading me to have to take this couple month break before going into another school. I ended up going to community college for my associate's degree in liberal arts. Then I went to a four-year school, to finish up to get my bachelor's degree and I ended up majoring in psychology. And then I went to another four-year school for my master's program in clinical psychology which would usually take two or three years instead of the full four. So for my master's program I was trying to be an LMHC which stands for Licensed Health Mental Counselor. So when I was learning more about this college and this program, I had gone with a friend and we both originally were going to sign up for this program together. Long story short, my friend ended up not signing up for the program. I ended up signing up for the program and starting it, and I had completed almost two years worth. When I had started this program, and to be completely honest, kind of during my bachelor's degree of psychology, what I started realizing was that I started to question whether I loved this field and this subject or not. I love helping other people and I like learning about certain psychology things, but there is so much more to psychology than just helping people. There's a lot of ethics and politics and some government involved with getting into the psych field and the more and more that I learned, I was starting to doubt more and more whether or not I want to continue doing this program or not. For people that personally know me since I was six years old, they knew I love to write and I've been writing short stories and just stories ever since and I've yet to fully complete one whole project besides some poetry or short stories. But people could tell the amount of passion that I had for writing and even some of my little projects that I do today. When it comes to psychology, or at least what the programs I had joined, I could never gain that passion. Whether you watch this whole video or not, one thing that I really want people to get out of this video is, especially for younger college students who are just starting, is go for exactly what you want to go for. I feel like almost my whole life I've always been doing things that other people thought I should do or what other people's dreams were. I always was following all these different directions and I never was fully doing my own thing. I didn't really have the most support when I started writing or it was something that was considered, oh, you're not going to make a lot of money. What's your plan? You should be. It was pushed a lot to go to a four-year school and just go for something that can make you a lot of money. And getting into the psychology field, I figured that helping people might be enough to want to stay in this field and that bonus of making a decent wage so that I can live comfortably. But oh my god, this program stressed me the F out. <laughs> I don't want to say that if something is stressful, you should leave it. That's not a reason why this whole schooling thing stopped. Part of it is the question of passion that I have for the field, but another big thing is I kind of didn't have a choice whether to stop or not. Even if I wanted to do this, something happened that ended up cutting it short anyway. So this program that I was in was super strict. You couldn't get lower than a B, or I want to say either an 83 or an 85. You couldn't get lower than that or you were kicked out of the program. Every single semester, I would stress myself the hell out on trying to stay, to make sure I was getting good enough grades. This was the only school and program that I'd ever done where I constantly was getting straight A's. Growing up, I had never received straight A's. I received honor roll sometimes. Sometimes I've received some C's or even a couple D's here or there every rare, like rare occasion. But this program, I actually was getting straight A's for all the hard work I was putting into. And that was helping convince me 
maybe this is what I should be doing because I'm doing well. The more that I looked at this program, I wasn't seeing all these difficult hurdles to hop over. I wasn't seeing them as an opportunity for a better future and a successful career. They, I was seeing them as dreadful <laughs> landmines that I had to try to dodge and avoid. This is also hard for me to talk about and just to even go through because I never not finished school. Ever since preschool, I never stayed back a year. I always finished any type of schooling. I could be, I wish like there was professional students. I would be a great professional student. But this whole thing has definitely been challenging for me, especially because you put a lot of money into these programs. Going for a master's degree is not cheap at all. This school was $20,000 a year. And with masters, it's less likely you'll get um, financial aid. You have to really go for scholarships or otherwise you're gonna have to get loans. And what made it worse on top of it, they would not give me a book voucher whatsoever. I don't know if that was just because it was a master's program or whatever, but I had to pay out of pocket for every single book. Each book was 100 to $200 and I'm just putting it on a credit card over and over and over again. But this new semester that I'm taking for the summer, it started a few days ago, so July 6th. I don't know when this video is gonna be posted, but July 6th was my official first day of this brand new exciting semester, yay. Well, for this semester, I was taking two courses, and one was psychological assessment, which I could tell was gonna be a little hard, but it also had the same structure as my other courses and then I was taking the Mac Daddy of mental health counseling courses. It's the course they document on when you go for licensing right after you get the degree and that is the dreadful practicum. So what practicum is, is normally it's an in-person course, at least this program it was originally in person where they film you counseling clients. I think you counsel with each other, you do an independent study, etc. Because of COVID-19, this summer semester in these two courses that are normally in person were strictly online this semester. All of the courses I had been taking this semester thus far were online, so I wasn't super nervous about that, but I knew in general this practicum course was gonna still be a challenge. I thought that I had to put 40 hours of recording in, then I went into the course, and now they're telling me I need 100 hours. <laughs> now mind you, in this program, after you take practicum and a couple other courses, you have to do internship hours in order to get your degree, and each internship that I had to do was 200 hours each, equaling I had to do 600 hours of recorded internships, along with this 100 hours, of practicum and all the other courses I still had to take within a certain amount of time and if I didn't do it all before four or five years they were going to kick me out of the program. I feel like there was a lot of factors where it made it very easy to be kicked out of the program and this semester I whether whether I wanted to stay or not which I was having some doubts but whether I wanted to stay or not they were kicking me out anyway kind of. So what had happened was that Psychological assessment, like I said, was similar to my other courses where there were due dates, there was assignments. I'm a very organized student. I use a agenda planner and I also use this weekly calendar. And on the weekly calendar, I plan out exactly what days I'm going to complete what assignments and such. The problem with this practicum course was everything was just recordings and I went into the syllabus and there was nothing. <laughs> All there was for this course, there was like only seven other students and the professor had posted this welcome video saying, welcome guys, and just like barely, barely scratching the surface on what this course was actually going to be. I feel like there was absolutely no direction and it's one of the most disorganized classes I've ever seen in my entire life. Usually classes give you a good amount of time, I want to say at least a few weeks, before the class starts to let you know which textbook that you need or textbooks for the class that you need. This class, it still just said to be determined a day before the course. Like what? I'll give them slight benefit of the doubt. This was the very first semester they ever did this course online along with the other one. So maybe it was just a little everywhere, but it also kind of costs a part of my future. So thanks. 
with this course, like I said, there was 40 hours recording with a client. I want to say there was 25 or 15 hours with another student. There was like 15 hours independent study. And then there was apparently class meetings, which I found a little weird because I guess there was Zoom class meetings, but it was also an online course and all my other online courses, you never had to do these meetings. It was a little weird, but I saw that and I was like, okay. It also never told me though, when these meetings were starting, what days of the week they were gonna be. There was barely any information on anything and it was stressing me the hell out. What made me feel a little bit better about this course was they were deciding to make it a pass or fail, which I'm actually pretty good at trying to just aim for a letter grade. I don't really care about pass or fail, but I thought maybe that'll make it a little bit easier because to pass the course, you just had to meet all, you had to make all of the meeting times. You couldn't miss a meeting for any reason. You just had to make all these meeting times and participate and counsel, I guess. I honestly don't even know what else I was supposed to do. That's all I got from the course. That's all I knew what this course was even about. I have no idea. Maybe there was more to it. They never explained it. Very first night of classes, supposedly i never got an email i never got a notification there was a class meeting and i guess there was four all i knew is there was going to be four during the whole program of like three months they never had dates it just said zoom meeting one zoom meeting two you clicked on them and it just said we'll let you know like there was no information on when these were going to start i do at the same time I received an email from a psychologist from a town I used to live in. And he tells me that, oh, hello, Frank. Um, I'm gonna be working with you for, like we're gonna record 10 to 20 hours of us working one-on-one. -on -one. That was just another thing that wasn't even mentioned as a recording process. And this guy's telling me that I need to get another textbook for him. It's not even necessarily required. He just wanted me to buy this book to read. It's probably a book he wrote, no offense. I feel like a lot of professors like doing that. They're like, here's the textbook. And then you look at the author and it's them. So you're just learning like their ideals, not anything based off of actual studies or logic. So all that first night I'm emailing this guy and I'm doing schoolwork for my other class because I'm like, well, they'll email me. They'll let me know when to get into this first meeting, when to actually do work for this other course. Because of all that, I missed the first meeting and failed the course pretty much. Like literally just failed the course in three seconds. So I emailed one of the, there was two directors of the program and I decided to email the man, there was a man and a woman. The female was actually my professor and I was just kind of done with her because of this disorganization. So I decided to email him. He has been really nice throughout. I've emailed him a few times throughout the entire program. He's been very kind about everything and I have nothing bad to say about him on anything. Yeah, there was no, there was no leniency on trying to make up this one hour, three hour meeting, whatever the hell it was. I don't even know how long it was. Um, there was no, no option to make it up. It was either I withdrew the whole semester and withdrawing both courses because the minimum courses I was able to take were two. If I only took one course, I had to pay upfront out of pocket, which would have been $2,500. So it was either withdraw or leave the program. He was nice enough to not just kick me out of the program and give me that option. But I really, after I read that email, I really took this time to think about exactly what I wanted to do. And this came back on the whole, do I really love this or not? Because I've worked so hard for almost two years and well even more because my bachelor's degree I did psychology I've been working so hard for all these years on this field and do I even enjoy it and the answer is I don't think so I have friends who work in the psych field they're counselors or they're you know working in hospitals or I hear about their experiences and I never expressed it out loud, but inside I'm thinking, oh my God, that's so awful. Like, I don't, like, do I picture myself working in these types of fields? So ultimately I did something I never thought I would do and I left the program. And I remember too, every semester, I was always so worried until I got my grades, whether or not I was gonna stay in this program. And like I said, I'd receive A's and be relieved and go, oh, thank God for that. 
But I thought when this whole thing had happened and I potentially was going to be out of this program and ultimately I am, I thought I was going to, I was stressing so much over staying in and I thought I was going to be completely heartbroken from not being in it anymore. And I really hate to say this. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen in the future with psych and everything, but I'm really relieved. I feel free. I feel like I can fly far away now because one thing with this program was that I was becoming an LMHC within this state. If I ever wanted to work in another state, I potentially have to do more internship hours, like hundreds more internship hours. I would have had to get licensed in another state. I would have had to do all this extra stuff. And I almost felt trapped in the state that I live in now being part of this program. And now I feel like I can go anywhere in life now. And I feel like I can really do what I love. So before you drop down a bunch of money and you start pursuing something that you're not at least more than 50% sure about or closer to 100% sure about, just make sure you figure out exactly what you want to do in life and do your research and do your research about what you're passionate about. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out my various links in the description and bye.